Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, aka your friendly neighborhood spoiler man, reporting live from the dailybugle.net. And this morning, a big plot breakdown of Spider Man 3 made its way to the web through sources that are apparently very close to the scripting process of the movie. Throughout this video, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know from the leaked post, including all of the plot details, what they could mean for the film, and where the movie could be going. Now, there will be potentially heavy spoilers here, and whilst all leaks like this should be taken with a grain of salt, we have covered a lot of leaks in the past that have turned out to be true, such as Joker, Avengers Endgame, Game of Thrones, Terminator Dog Fate, and so on. So, if you don't want anything potentially ruined, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the leaks and spoilers on the upcoming movie. And with that out of the way, thanks for clicking this video. Now, let's get into our breakdown of the Spider Man 3 plot leak. Okay, so these come from Reddit user NoSale7 on the Marvel Studio spoilers thread, and this place is normally 50 50 on plot leaks, with some being pretty much correct and others being completely made up. I'll let you decide as we go through it, but unlike a lot of the ones that turn out to be lies, this is extremely detailed and it fleshes out the entire story, picking up right after the events of Spider Man Far From Home. The user said that they have a source that told them that these are key plot points from a very early draft of the movie, and it picks up not long after the ending of the aforementioned film. The user said that, in the opening of the movie, Peter is raided and arrested at his home by cops and SWAT team members very early on in the film. Peter is tried in court and sentenced to life, with no possibility of parole in a maximum security prison. Much of the first act is court proceedings and Peter adjusting to life in prison before all of the convicts and even guards start trying to kill him. Now, there is no mention of Daredevil here, which was an aspect that was originally rumored to be in the film, with Peter seeking legal counsel from Matt Murdock. This was apparently going to be the point that the Netflix shows were revived before going forward on Hulu as their own entities, but at the moment, excluding that, this does line up with things that have been reported on in the past. Peter discovers there was a huge contract put on him by someone on the outside calling himself the Benefactor. Some of you may remember the Benefactor from Ant-Man and the Wasp, and before the collapse of the Disney-Sony deal, it was rumoured that, at the end of Far From Home, this would be revealed to be Norman Osborn, however this leak changes that up, which I'll get into later. There's a couple of red herrings here and there, but eventually it does line up with what other sources have said so far. The bus carrying him and other prisoners is intercepted in the middle of the city by Craven the Bounty Hunter as they call him in the film. Craven coldly kills the prisoners and dukes it out with Peter. Peter manages to escape Craven, badly beaten, but he is free now a fugitive from the law and being chased by people who want him dead. Peter disconnects himself from everybody he knows, only ever reaching out to Happy via payphone to ask him for help if possible and to leave a message for his friends and family. He is otherwise resourceless. We find out the mysterious benefactor is actually Quentin Beck, who is still alive and working behind the scenes to get rid of Spider-Man before returning as the renowned Mysterio. This lines up with the ending of Far From Home, with a lot of people believing that Mysterio was the good guy due to the footage reported on by J. Jonah Jameson. Now, disappointingly, JJ isn't mentioned at all in the plot leaks, which sucks as he's someone that I think the studio would be desperate to get back, especially with how hyped everyone was from the post credit scene of Far From Home. There are some rumours that he will be popping up at some point in the upcoming Morbius movie, but we will see when that is released next year. Much of the second act plays out similarly to No Country for Old Men, where it's a cat and mouse game between Spidey and Craven. Peter spends much of the film with no web shooters in a new, but rough, handcrafted Spider-Man suit. This is Craven's first time being tasked to kill a superhuman, and he's clearly having fun with it, almost taking it easy. Peter is caught in a race between trying to clear his name upon discovering that Beck is alive, and also trying to avoid the law and Craven, along with other small-time hitmen and villains who pop up along the way. Beck becomes increasingly frustrated with Craven's failure to kill Spider-Man, and we find out this is Craven's last hunt, as he has been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and he's savoring it. He honestly just doesn't want to kill a kid though. This kind of lines up with the psychology of the character, as well as major parts of his rich history, and Craven has always been a kind of anti-hero, which this plot leak manages to capture beautifully. Beck threatens to kill Craven if he doesn't get the job done, 
And afterwards, we discover that Quentin himself has a benefactor, none other than Norman Osborn, who is running for senator. Norman eventually exposes Beck as a fraud and proves Peter Parker is innocent, which swings public opinion in his way before the election. Norman gets the credit for reopening the investigation and finding the truth before he's elected. The final battle between Craven and Spider-Man is brutal, they get sandwiched by police and it ends in Craven nearly being killed by an extremely anger Peter Parker. Craven tells Peter where Beck is hiding and Peter lets him live. Peter goes to Beck's hideout which turns into a big illusion which Peter defeats. Quentin is arrested, all his belongings and evidence are seized and Peter is exonerated. Peter reunites with MJ, Ned and May and he visits Doctor Strange who offers to make the world forget and Peter ponders the question and the credits roll. And that's all of the leaks that we have. Honestly, if this is what we end up getting, I'd actually be pretty happy. This really feels like the perfect tying together of the Spider-Man MCU trilogy, and it has a lot of big reveals, twists, and also amazing setup for the future. Spider-Man 3 has been said to be the character's quote-unquote endgame by Marvel CEO Kevin Feige, and this is packing a lot of elements to it that makes it seem like it certainly will be that. This was also said to be Spider-Man's darkest chapter, and due to all of the things that are going on in it, it certainly comes across like that. I like how Norman Osborn uses the clearing of Peter's name as a springboard to get more power for himself, and we all do kinda know that Spider-Man won't be thought of as guilty by the end of the third movie, so when they do clear his name, it is a smart move for it to spiral into more problems. This aesthetic has always been a big part of Spider-Man's stories, and watching him go from one problem to the next is what keeps the characters so relatable, so I definitely think that it's a really inspired choice. I do like that Mysterio returns as well, as I always had a lot of questions about his death. Just something about it didn't feel all that satisfying, and if he does return alongside Craven, then yeah, that's going to be an awesome addition. Both Tom Holland and director John Watts have said that the next character that they want the webhead to tackle is Craven, so if this is someone they bring in, I won't be mad at it. Craven's Last Hunt is an outstanding graphic novel and it would be brilliant to see that play out on the big screen as those who read it know just how good it is. I am kind of still shaky if this is something that we will definitely get as there are certain bits here and there that I'm unsure of but as far as plot leaks go this is way more detailed than the usual bunch that we get which are normally just about 300 words long. Unlike them this is expansive, heavily detailed and it seems like a structured storyline with a three act narrative that touches upon past events such as the benefactor whilst also creating new elements. This sounds a lot like some of the things that we've heard are going to be present in the MCU going forward for phases 4 and 5, so yeah I am more on the side that this could turn out to be true. If it doesn't though this was still a great read and I am pretty psyched for this and if you're a big Spider-Man fan as well then I'm sure that this definitely has you pumped too. There's nothing here that I really dislike and often plot leaks have me scratching my head but this one seems pretty tight so yeah I am happy with it. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on these leaks and if there's something that you want to see. Do you believe them or do you think that we'll get something completely different? Comment below and let me know and if you love this video 3000 then please give it a thumbs up and make sure you check out our full breakdown of everything that we know so far about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness which will be linked at the end. We go over the plot details, tie-ins, release dates and more so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to see why this could be Marvel's best movie yet. If you want to come chat to me after the video then make sure you follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT or head over to my Discord server which will be linked in the description below. We drop videos on there early so if you want to see stuff before anyone else then that's the best place to be. It's free to join and we have an awesome community so hopefully I see you over there very soon. We're also giving away a free copy of the Marvel Phase 3 Part 1 box set and Blu-ray which contains Civil War, Doctor Strange, Homecoming, Ragnarok and more and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on Spider-Man 3 in the comments section below. The winner is going to be chosen today on the 15th of November and the set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.